He's a war veteran and they don't cut them from the same clothes as the walking dictionary of the Meki political jungle of Zimbabwe as the Zimbabwe National Liberation War Veterans Association Chairman, Comrade Muchangwa. Welcome to the program, Comrade Muchangwa. Thank you very much, SFM. What is the history behind the rich terms that you seem to come up with, thus providing quotable quotes for the journalists? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I'm a student of English literature, and yeah, among many other things, and uh, yeah, I like the way the Irish uh, play around with the English language, you know, even if it is not their language, and uh, I studied literature, um, Sean O'Casey, and uh, you know, other Irish authors, and it has affected my language, of course, Shakespeare and everybody, but I also like Shona. And I, I like languages. I, I am proficient in French to a fair degree. I have some Portuguese. And I do speak Mandarin, you know, from my stint in China, you know. I, and I get stammering of Africans when I was in Namibia. When you understand language, it's easy for you to communicate, to, to, any, to have empath with other people. So the more the languages you know, the better. And that's what I try to I I, I love Sean. I love, I love the the beauty of language and the, 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 the history which, which is behind all language is a form of human interaction. So when these expressions come out, they just come out naturally? Yes, they do. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I try to be, I think, thoroughly before I, I, I speak, you know, and uh, I try to be as pithy as possible and uh, not to load my, 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 my explanations. So you need to have command of language to do that. Okay, uh, we, that, that was just background information, just a little banter there before we get into the program. This day, yesterday was Independence Day, and uh, Comrade Mutangwa, how did you celebrate it? Well, I was there at the National Sports Stadium. It was a fantastic day, one of the best independence celebrations which we have ever had. Uh, the president spoke succinctly to the point and you know to his speech and it was very business oriented very practical and uh, a, a forthright message to the international community a business community in particular to say there's a big billboard on the international airport to zimbabwe on the borders to zimbabwe to say zimbabwe is now ready for business uh, coming as it is after his clarifications on the indigenization issue a couple of uh, days ago a couple you know this was tonic for for the zimbabweans because what this country now needs more than anything else is a a, a dose of capital foreign direct investment on a big scale you know we no modern country um, progresses without uh, capital. We are in the capitalist age. This thing. And, uh, you know, foreign direct investment, which is uh, the home of uh, managerial expertise, the home of technical competence, the home of all the things which make human endeavor be rewarding, uh, in, uh, resides uh, for the, in private companies, most of it, you know, in, in the world today. And you, we need those private companies to come to Zimbabwe to, to, to put their money so that we can um, re revitalize our infrastructure, we can make full use of the brains which we have educated on a scale which is unprecedented in Africa. And uh, of course, to make the best use of the resources which God has generously given to this country, the, the you know, foreign direct investment is the lifeblood of any modern nation state. And um, you know the, the difference between Africa and Europe is that uh, Europe went into the capitalist age in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century, whilst Africa was not in the capitalist age. And uh, that discrepancy in human development was later to play havoc on the Africans. You know, we were almost we were lucky not to be exterminated as the Aborigines and the Indians, because we were not we were rather late in getting into the capitalist era. So we are now, we, we know, and when we fought for independence, it was to, for us to get our rightful access to international capital markets. That was the major, you know, we're being denied all that. And even the sanctions thing which we talk about right now, it is, was an attempt for, to Zimbabwe to deny Zimbabwe capital. So whatever your enemy wishes against you as a guerrilla, we say, that is that which is for you. Anything which the enemy likes, you don't like. So if the enemy is denying, trying to deny, deny you capital through sanctions, you must furiously fight 
to make sure that you forestall what the enemy desires of you. So the quest for capital is the single most important uh, challenge for Zimbabwe today. And we really need foreign direct investment on a scale which is unprecedented to make sure that we revitalize and modernize our economy and create a modern nation state so that uh, the revolution and the independence which we want is not aborted. Mm -hmm. yes. you, you talk about uh, the, the presidential statement on indigenization. What in particular were you not happy about with the previous dispensation uh, with regards to indigenization? Uh, it's the shallowness. You know, almost all the ministers who have been in charge of that means they are so, they, they are so parochial. They, they, they can't understand. You know, they lack the ideological foundation to, 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 of, of how a modern economy uh, works. You know, they, they, they don't understand the way we were in the war when we dealt with the national grievances and we put them in the context of human development right from the communal from the communal to the slave and to, to the all the way to to feudal these things which we learned in the war which were the foundation of our thrust as political commissars to mobilize people most of the people have been given that job they simply lack that understanding of where zimbabwe should be so there's been a lot of ignorance you know there's there's more. There's been more noise than capability, you know. And uh, uh, and you, you 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 can't play out your own game in the world capital markets. They have there are certain rules which they operate on. And uh, Zimbabwe cannot be a Cinderella to the world capital markets. We can't be. We have to play it according to the existing rules. Unfortunately, you know those the the, the, the ministers who have been in charge of that they just lacked the depth. And, it's, it's unfortunate that for a country which spends so much money on education, we have such parochial agendas running a key development tool like the indigenization uh, ministry. And uh, of late, it was worse, you know, when you know, somebody could go to a Marondera meeting where the youths are called in and they are told, I want to make you rich, and the only way to make you rich is I'll go to the companies and get money from them and give it to you. I mean, you, you don't talk like that. Companies are struggling. And the money which companies have is money belongs to their shareholders. You just don't come out of your room, become a mini of your house, become a minister, and start saying that that money is mine and I'll take it away from this and give it still from Paul to pay pay to to pay Peter. You don't do things like that. Mm -hmm. And it was causing utter confusion. And we had a precedent in the two year two thousand when vigilante groups we went out into into companies and threatening directors left, right, and center. And it played havoc on the economy. You no, know, a director of a company is an important person. You know, he is represent the shareholders of of that company. You know, give him his space. You know, he he must account for the money which has been invested in a company. Nobody should just come from nowhere and start directing the affairs of the company and saying we'll take money from this and give it to the other. It was. It really caused consternation in, in business circles, and it was right that the president would come and nip it in the bud. And, uh, you know, we, we, we are not bothered if people do get egg on their face when the head of states put the things right as they should be. And uh, even uh, today, you know, we had very important meetings with some of the most the, 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 uh, planning agents from China, which was in the country, and they were saying, why did you take so long to clarify this issue? It was so important because, you know, China has become a very major source of capital in the world. The same with the United States. Everyone was saying Zimbabwe should have been quick to, to react. But anyway, better late than never. And when the head of state comes and makes a special announcement to say, even the laws which are in misalignment to the police position, which is stated recently, they will be amended. This has sent such a comforting weight to the international business community. And with that, it makes life easy, you know, to, for, for, for us, for Zimbabwe, to start looking uh, at attracting capital into the markets. It's also said that the people who talk about indigenization as ministers, they have never been outside of Zimbabwe to look for capital. You know, they may write a document called Zim Asset, but to a person, the people who wrote that document, nobody knows to New York. Nobody knows Tokyo, nobody knows Ankara, nobody knows Sao Paulo, nobody knows um, Frankfurt, nobody has ever been to, the only place where they've been is Johannesburg. I mean, the capital market is much bigger than Johannesburg, or for that matter, London. But these are people, like I told you, they don't understand the world, of the global world of capital. Okay. So they want to drive Zim asset on the basis of uh, taxes from Highfield. I mean, you can't build 
7 or for that matter Kariba South on the money which is collected from Highfield, you have to go to the capital markets. You can't, you can't build a railway line on the money which is collected from Sakuba or for that matter from Popoma. You have to go to the capital market. But all the ministers in the G40 who, try, who are trying to say we are champions of Ponte and Put, they've never been to any capital. They don't know a bank which matters in, in terms of, of investments. They don't know a, funder, a funding agents. They, they don't know this world. So okay, it's sorry. sad that these people are the ones who have been driving the indigenization agenda. Are you happy with the current Chinese investment? Was some are uh, criticizing and say the Chinese are taking out everything. They take out the, the, the cash and they, uh, they export it. Uh, you from, if you are understanding with the Chinese, are you happy with the... I'm, I'm very happy with the way we have engaged with China. Without China, as a, as a competing center of capital, we would not have succeeded in busting American sanctions. I just want to give you a good example. A cup, the, 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 the auction floors have, have opened. We are talking of 800 million US dollars probably going to into the pockets of the new farmers, the new tobacco farmers. I, with the former vice president, the late vice president, the soul of the nation, Comrade Muzenda, we worked on that program to bring, bring Chinese investment into Zimbabwe. This is the and, and now the turnover of the Zimbabwean economy is 1.3 billion or 1.4 because of the tobacco sector. Who was the prime mover in making sure that? Uh, a rural people become uh, 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 put into the modern economy. Is China tobacco the largest tobacco company in the world? Now, if if you follow eco cash to rural areas and you follow the cell phone to rural areas, the main driver has been the money from tobacco. And you know, if we remove what the success of the tobacco, the tobacco sector, we could as well have written off the the, the land reform. Who did that? China. But beyond that. For 35 years, nobody has built us a new generator for power, you know, in Zimbabwe. 35 years, nobody. In the last three, four years, the Chinese have put Wange 7 and 8. They are putting Wange 7 and 8 now. They are in Kariba South. If somebody can put an electricity generator into your country, and then you don't take him seriously, then it's, it's, then you, you don't know what you are worth. I mean, there are some Chinese big business people, they are not all perfect. And most of them, they are small. Anyway, the ones we are talking about expatriating this and that, that's it happens. I'm not saying they are perfect, but look, you don't see a Zimbabwean selling to a lease in South Africa and you say that that's a Zimbabwean businessman. No, these are these are small players whom we are talking about. China has become a modern. 11 to 12 trillion dollar economy. There are serious business people out there. They are rocking Wall Street. They are making the bosses in Frankfurt get excited. The London, the London mayor and the London minister of finance, they can't spend a day without, you know, quoting Shanghai, Shenzhen. These are serious players. So if those world shakers in London, in New York, are embracing China, it will be said for Zimbabweans, you know, if you go against the trend. But, of course, it is the parochialism which I've talked about earlier on. People who mistake Zimbabwean women selling to this in South Africa and brand them as Zimbabwean business people. Okay. That's, that's, the same, that's the same analogy. For those listeners who have just joined us, the program is Live Wire on Star FM Radio. And tonight we have the Zimbabwe National Liberation War Veterans Association Chairman, Comrade Chris Mchangwa. We are discussing independence and other related issues. We will, we will talk about other issues uh, as we go on. As, as we have well, just said, we have just been talking about the economy. But the main reason why you came here, uh, Comrade Mchangwa, is independence. There's been a lot of negativity around the day. Some, if you go on social media, uh, some are saying there's nothing to celebrate about the day because many have turned their backs on the true principles of the struggle. What is your reading of this? Well, you know, it's, we have gone through a challenging period, especially in the economy, the shrinking of the economy, even the, 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 the negative growth in the economy, you know, the deflation which is going on when, you know, you know the, the, the so, there's so much suffering on the part of it makes people feel that maybe we could have done better and and, and it's it's completely understandable that's why from the onset i said we have won the independence war they wanted us out of the out of zimbabwe they wanted to reverse the gains of the revolution we have won the education war we have won the resources war it's a happy occasion that uh, you know, when we talk about the resources of Zimbabwe, P.O. Box now is Harare, it's not P.O. Box Toronto, or P.O. Box Sydney, or for that matter, P.O. Box Johannesburg or London. 
companies are coming to talk to Zimbabwe about Zimbabwean resources. Along the way, we paid a price. But look, we are over the hill now. We have traveled out. We need to take these resources which we now have and take them to the capital markets ourselves and interact with global capital, get businessmen in the world excited about investing in Zimbabwe so that we bring technology, we bring jobs, we make Zimbabwe again a congenial home for our diaspora. Actually, the most important indicator that things are going on well for Zimbabwe is when the diaspora starts trooping back home to say things are good there because they are doing very well in the diaspora, the Zimbabwean diaspora. They are doing very well abroad. We, with the moment, the, the real litmus test that we are now doing well is when Zimbabweans from the diaspora begin to bring back their skills at home. This is the challenge which we have. And the only way to deal with that is to make this country the premier destination of foreign direct investment in Africa. If we do that, we have won the game. And there's not, no, there's been this feeling that indigenization is versus foreign direct investment. That's nonsense. It's, it's the sort of G40 parochial agendas. No, 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 no. E, e, indigenization it creates the foundation of foreign direct investment to come into Zimbabwe because Businessmen don't want to deal with the resources of a country through third parties. They would rather deal direct with the owners of that resource. So it's good. I understand the sentiments which you're expressing about, but look, every country goes through a bad patch. The main thing is how do you get out of that bad patch? And uh, I also want to say, those who are talking on social media, they are trying to talk about negative, but if you go by the attendance which was there at the, at the, at the National Sports Center and all over, people love the fact that we're free people. People love the fact that Zimbabwe fought you know, the, the struggle which no African country ever waged. The British were no slouches with their Rhodesians in Zimbabwe. They knew their game. But we uprooted them. This is a country with immense capabilities. If you can do that to the British, you can. there's no challenge which you can't overcome. So there is hope, and that is the hope which was driving uh, the, the, the agenda of independence. And I'm so happy that the president was on the spot. He focused on that. Then with this wonderful play, which came from the General Simondi from the, the prison services, Comrade Tondereinik, about the history of Zimbabwe, people were captivated. They were animated when they watched the play out of our history in recent times. You know, these are things which Zimbabwe love because no can no family ever survived that war without losing somebody. My Ningi or Bao Ningi, who is not known to the family but Angwan Ningi. It's because every family lost somebody. Zimbabweans love their war. And they, I always hear, you know, you know, when I meet young people, they are saying Comrade Mchangwa. We have that gap in our history. Why can't something be done about it? We need to understand we are so educated, but we don't know ourselves. Yeah. So those who try to say on social media, Zimbabweans are despondent, they are missing the boat. Mm -hmm. This is a country with a long history, no longer than most African countries. Just look at Great Zimbabwe, you know, we have nothing like that in Africa, south of the Sahara. That's the history of Zimbabwe. We have a long memory and we have great capabilities and we will do well. So I'm never part of the despondent school. Okay. Talking of history, uh, the past two years have seen some various narratives on the liberation struggle with some people being exposed as having played a peripheral role in the struggle contrary to what we have believed all along. Who has the correct history of our liberation struggle and when is it going to be told? Well, we were working on that on the Minister of the War Veterans. I'm very happy that in his speech, the president quickly zeroed in on the fact that he had a meeting, a very successful meeting with the representatives, 10,000 of them of the war veterans. They obviously are the source of the history of Zimbabwe because they were the players, they are the stockholders of that struggle. They are the ones who organized the people in rural areas, so they know whom they organized in the rural areas, because that's where the war was fought. It was a people's war. So those is, that is where we need to get the story from, not uh, you know, the, the new narrative which is coming from you know, students from some silly Western you know, social affairs I and mean, social sciences departments. In, in particular, you know, this has been the G4 agenda. You know, they, they, they want to revisit and rewrite the history of Zimbabwe and they create, you know, heroes of their own. They don't know nothing about some of them are deserters. And I've put it on record that deserters have no business trying to write a or to be front leaders of a story which they don't know, which they ran away from. You know, five years, you know, of that war was fought, you know, in, in, in 1975, 74 to 1979. That is the crucial period. That's where the big numbers came. 
That's where you know, young people came from all over the country to go and join the struggle. You have never seen such kind of energy being released by a population as we did in that period. That has not been properly captured. I want to salute Alexander Kanengoni, my late friend, my comrade, my schoolmate from Kutama, and my soulmate at the Patu School of Ideology in Mozambique, and my field, uh, one of our field commanders in the early part of the war, the big war from 75. He tried to put something down, you know, there are lessons to it, which, he, of course, it's a persuasion, but uh, I have no problem with that. This is literature, you know, people have got a viewpoint, you don't see all the good picture, but uh, at least he, he, he started writing on it and we, do more, we need more of that. Ron Sadomba has been doing great stuff. My other so schoolmate from St. Augustine's all the way to university and into the war and my, the godfather to my children, uh, Thomas Vuma has written poetry, you know, about the war, you know. We need more of that and uh, if only the war veterans can be given the comfort and when the president addressed the issue of welfare, you know, you need the you you have to have the luxury of comfort to make your mind you have the spare time to think about your past. But if you are constantly dealing with poverty, trying to address the five years which you lost out of the war, trying to address the the scars of that war, and you have poverty, you can you know the the bane of the war veterans right now is the issue of war poverty, and men are dying and they don't have the luxury of putting pen to paper. Now that the president is working very hard on the issue, and there are big things which we are working on, and me as the chairman of the association, and former minister, and we are working well with the new minister and the permanent secretary, we are thinking that we can, if we address the issue of poverty, then more veterans will have you know, the comfort of making sure that they spare the time to go through their experiences and they can put pen to paper. And that will be a wonderful story you know, for, for Zimbabwe, for Africa, and uh, indeed for the, for the diaspora, but in, also for humanity in general. You have never seen such virility as expressed by Zimbabweans in their confrontation with the British in any modern African state. We demonstrate that in the feet of arms, a black man fighting for his country can be as good as anybody. And that is the story which needs to be told. And that Zimbabweans could respond to the challenge of their nationhood in a modern way, you know, including the feet of arms, in a manner which is unprecedented. This is the pride of Africa. That is the story of Zimbabwe, and that is the story which needs to be told. Some will argue that uh, Comrade Muchangwa is rewriting history to suit the current dispensation of the internal struggles in ZANU-PF, uh, which you have termed state, state capture. Why did you not mention these issues before of war deserters and leaders launching in hotel rooms far from the front line of the struggle? Well, you know, it depends on the challenge of the times. If people begin to, 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 to feel that they have the comfort of trying to steal a people's history and try to, you know, they think that they, if, they, if they are given, they sconce their way to the center of power in a country, then they think that, you know, somehow because they are the center of power in a country, they are now the owners of the history of that country. You know, obviously it arouses emotions. It arouses consciousness among the, the, the people, especially those who actually fought. And I can tell you that the whole country, you know, is is a go at the prospect of somebody is a, or somebody trying to twist their history because this is the history of the people of Zimbabwe, and you know, so we are basically responding to a challenge. Maybe the challenge was nascent at some stage. I of course saw it at that particular point, you know, but you know, you don't start crying fire before you you see the trend at which the fire is going. You know, we are we are we are guerrillas. We are very, very strategic in our thinking and we are very tactical in our response. And when we start responding, I want to say to you, the we have seen the trend. We know this game. We have, <laughs> there are nobody there's nobody who can fool us about it how to deal with situations, because that's how we survive day by day. So if anybody has got a, somehow a feeling that he can be up smart against the former wife of war veterans in this country, then he's got something wrong coming up his way. We will not allow that kind of thing to happen. And uh, the meeting on the on, uh, two weeks ago was a good indicator. And we'll go back to the people, because... We are known to the people. We even can go there and call our names in the field. We, I can literally, I'm, you know, with the War Veterans Association, we, we have access to every village. It was not every village contributed somebody to the war. There is nobody with an organizational capability as that of the War Veterans. Don't be fooled by people who write on Facebook. It's a lot of nonsense. 
you know, you write on Facebook in a country where the penetration of the internet is zero, then you are you are writing for people who are, in, who, who, who are only on the internet. It does not cause any. It, it, when it comes to the press, to, to, to when push comes to shove, hey, that's where we over. We know this game. It was not easy to uproot the Rhodesians. We are master organizers. An organization is not taught at university and, you know, and becomes practical. You need to do it in the field. And to organize an ordinary Mjiba and to organize an ordinary uh, boy to become a, I mean, a girl, to become a, that's, that's how what organization is. And to die doing it or to have your comrades actually you know, be wounded doing it, it gives you a practical edge about organization which we can always call upon. And that energy is what we are going to put on the table if there is a new challenge to what we stood for as young people. When we talk of the narrative of the liberation struggle, uh, it has not been very favorable to women freedom fighters. And some are even using the lack of narrative on the role of women uh, to say that no women were deployed to the front. Uh, what is the true position with regards to the role that women played during the war? It's sad, it's very, very sad that we missed that part. And, uh, you know, there's been a trend over when we're declaring heroes that they've tended to be a majority of them, yes, and they do deserve all the women who are heroes. Most of them, actually, all of them do deserve, when the party says they should be there, they, they, they do deserve, they've got a history. But there was a certain pattern which was beginning to emerge where they were either husbands of the nationalist heroes or the husbands of, 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 of some of the, you know, you know so that gave a of a character that you know the, the 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 contribution of the women were to be beside their husbands that is not the true story you know it is a people's war which we fought and 50 percent to 51 percent of this Zimbabwean population is women you can't fight a people's war with half of the population being indigent it's not possible we, we had to get the whole population in gear so just by the mere fact that it was a people's war it's scientific don't listen to all this nonsense about uh, uh, spirit mediums and this and that, you know. That is part of mobilizing people. But at the root of it, the war was scientific. Mao is a, say, is a Marxist Leninist. Lenin is, is a, say, it comes from historical material. It was a, a war it, based on science. So you have to get the whole population, and that includes women. But even at a more practical level, love of country does not... If gender, it is no beauty, it is no, it is no religion, it is no creed. A lot of the young women who left, particularly after '75, from Tambara, from Saint Augustine's, from Tegwani, the, the, and all the schools, they ended up in that war, and they were as courageous as any. And Vivian Mashita, whom I met at Junda, you know, in, in just outside Chimoyo in 1975, she was an exceptionally courageous girl, you know, all the way through. But there were many others who died. I'll give you, there was a girl, you miss, a, a, an albino girl who was called Do It. That's what, that was her name. She was such a brave fighter at the Battle of Chimoyo that you know, when the Rhodesians wanted to capture her, they thought she was either a Cuban or a Chinese or she was an albino or for that matter a Russian. So they said, we will capture that foreigner who is an instructor because she was commanding everybody. They advanced on her wounded. When they were about to get to within, you know, she pulled a gun from a dead colleague and started firing back. And I met the Rhodesian who actually said that girl was courageous. I met him a couple of months ago by chance in a restaurant. He says, I, we, we have never seen such a fighter in our, in, in, you know, of that caliber. These are the girls who fought that war. And when Chimo, after Chimo and Nyazonia, when most of them were actually being bombed in Mozambique, they said, why die in Mozambique when I came to fight? We also need to go to fight the enemy who is making, who is bombing us. That changed our psyche, and they wanted, they came to the front. That is the group which includes Vivian, the 45, that includes Tichawana Freedom. You know, the comrade parents, she, the comrade Tichawana, the comrade Juchuhuri, when they attacked Vivian, Mashita was the one who did the reconnaissance, the biggest battle which we did is Grand Reef, one of our big positional battles when we're now having liberated zones. The, 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 the reconnaissance was done by Vivian Mashita. When they discovered that she's a girl from the Mutari area, and she was a local girl, we had to redeploy her away because we were afraid that her family would be victimized because they knew it was a Mashita girl and the Rhodesian forces were looking for her. So she had to go to Tete, where again she displayed the exceptional valor. These are women in the field. You know, this is not... When women of Zimbabwe today say we are free, it's not a gift from some gracious ZANU-PF men or this. It's
which is something which they end as women of Zimbabwe. We liberate, they liberated themselves. They took, they, they, they took the challenge. They took the enemy head on. So I feel very, very, very proud that uh, uh, somebody who was in the field like Vivian Mashita was actually put on, on Hero's Acre. That will help change the narrative because there are some things who think that women went to become concubines. That's nonsense. A lot of young authors, I mean, there were some challenges, and I do, because I was actually in prison when one of the presidents, the vice presidents, I was in prison for this or that. It was because I challenged the, some of the commanders who were older than, who were in the war than me who were not so well educated, but they were senior to us and who were coming from university with their wayward behavior towards girls. Who, you know, and these are things which we had to fight again. You know, Comrade Opam Chingul was beaten every day at the parade, and we didn't understand what was going on. She was being branded a spy until we discovered, no, she was refusing advances from some of our wayward colleagues. This is part of the challenge of the formation of a people's army. It was not a rose of a bed of roses. It was not something done on a manual. We grow our way. We stepped stone by stone in the river to, 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 to test the depth of that river before we could cross. These are the challenges which need to be written because that's how we, we made the people's army. The pride which Zimbabwe Defense Forces is today, including CIO, which is uh, so well respected by the IU, that's why we had enough. Uh, 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 our officers established the security department of the IU, the professionalism of the ZRP. These are things which are a product of that struggle when we formed our army, the manual to form an army. And remember, we are the first people to create a commander-in-chief who is black. You know, our Stole was one of them, you know, before he was supposed by President Mugabe, Komo was the other one. We created the idea of commander-in-chief, and now it is accepted that, you know, we can have a commander-in-chief of an original army. This is what we did. There was pain and suffering within and in the challenge of the enemy. And the girls who were part of that war, they were real, real as brave as any apart from many other duties which they, they, they did, you know, during the war. Okay, do you stand by your statements on Dr. Joyce Mujuru that uh, she did not down the, uh, a helicopter? Yes, I still, and she knows it. She never did, you know, you know they, they, this is uh, an effort to, to, to puff your, your ego up, you know, we, we, and, and she, she, she bought into that story where a lie about you eventually begin to believe in it. But look, she was my commander. When I went to the first woman commander, I mean, the first trained woman, woman was Joyce Mujuru and she helped train me. I mean, she could have done more on the issues which I talked about earlier, the abuse of girls at Nyazonia, because she was the commander. She didn't do as much as I could and we, 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 we thought she could. And all of us who had come from university ended up in jail. Me, Luri, Sobusa Golandebere, the late John Mayowe, you know, we all were put in prison for resisting some of the abuses on young girls which were going on at that time. She should have done more to, to as a commander because she was trained she didn't, and uh, I hold her against that. But besides that, she's as good a comrade as any, and uh, I have nothing against her record as a comrade except when she begins to to, to believe people who puff up a yeah, 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 war credentials beyond what she achieved. That I'm against. It is also not so much against her. It is also much against the other comrades who may not have survived. You don't make yourself a, a superhero today and try to make those who didn't survive look like they were not as good as you are. No, 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 no. It was a collective effort. It was a voluntary effort by committed people not getting with one life, not getting any salary. Respect your com comrades. Don't try to be any more better than them. Okay. For those who have just joined us, the program is Live Wire on Star FM. And tonight we have the chairman of the Zimbabwe National Liberation War Veterans Association, Comrade Christopher Mchanga. We are discussing independence and other related issues which are of interest to you, the listeners. Uh, you can join the conversation on WhatsApp. The numbers are 0771-897-897. Uh, let me try to just read some of them, Comrade Mchangwa, uh, just to as a breather before we go into the next uh, topic. Uh, good evening, Comrade Mchangwa. Lead me to a serious Chinese investor who wants to invest in gold mining. That's a listener there. And then another one, are the war veterans still physically fit to go into military combat? I'm worried about the sentiments from Comrade Mchangwa. And then uh, the, the another view says... Uh, Aiwa, 
Ramchangwa vatangwa chitauro zvakanaka asi pauri kunjenga padamudziko ratasana nevanhu nenzara kwete zvekuti akarwa ndiyani kana kuti aripi vana vari kutambura yeah. those are some of the sentiments which are coming through on our whatsapp platform as the listeners uh, uh, respond and then another one is saying g14 ndiva naniko so uh, so those are some of the sentiments which are coming through. You can jot them, the, those points down, and then you'll respond later, Comrade Mchangwa. Yes. Let, let's talk about the, the Indaba, the two, two weeks ago, the Indaba. Uh, are you happy with the outcome of the Indaba with I, the president? I'm extremely happy with the, the outcome of the Indaba. It was a frank, no holds barred discussion about uh, you know where we have been. We traveled for the last 30, 30 36 years with uh, our association with our country with our president and the president came down there was a lot of consternation and, and a lot of lies about what the intention was and even some people were trying to skin to make the people the president be scared but he's not for veteran number one how can he be scared you know being a war veteran number one people who think that they they can appropriate the president away from his own war veterans they are the ones who were trying to pay through uh, other issues about that meeting but we were very happy it actually, I am the one, as the chairman of the war veterans, who widened it to, to, to include other war veterans. In particular, I wanted the recognition of the war veterans who remained in the armed and the security services, who have been promoted since 1980, because they are very capable. They, 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 they have showed that they can be part of a professional modern state machinery. So I am the one who widened the net, and it was my recommendation, contrary to to, to, to some of the, you know, to the, 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 the detractors. I'm the one who said, no, let's make it white. These are people who went to school. They survived the war. They became professional. They got uh, their medals in, in one way or the other, or in, they got recognition. Why shouldn't they be at this big meeting with our president? That's why we had them, and the quality was good. Remember, these were young people who were very smart. Father Prosa, who has just been buried in, was my teacher at St. Augustine's. He was asked by the BBC about people going to war in 1975. You know how he answered it? He says, the best ones are the ones who are leaving class and going to war. So the ones who were the most capable and the most visionary among the Zimbabweans at that particular time are the ones who found their way to war and Father Prosa testified to that and many of the headmasters who were from that period they were attest to that. So these are the guys who survived. They are now in the part of the Zimbabwean state machinery. They came, we discussed, we're very happy, we are making progress. The chairman, I mean, I mean the comrade of my name, the former the permanent secretary, my, my, my former civil servant when I was minister, is working very hard. The minister, Minister Dube, is working on a, on a number of issues. Remember, the war veterans have won every battle which they've been engaged in, the, pol the military one, the political one. That's why ZANU-PF is in power 35 years down the line. We know this game. But it is harnessing the organizational capability of the war veterans in the new venture of business. At a time when our enemies are, 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 are sharpening their, are, 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 their spears, are no longer sharpening their spears, but are actually turning them swords into plowshares, we need war veterans to get into the game of business. And I know that game was, there's probably been no Zimbabwean envoy to date who has done as much as I've done in terms of attracting new capital to Zimbabwe. And I know the game. I started with the, the development of Bengal, Southern Africa, and built the digital link between Messina and Zimbabwe. In 1998, 1998, it was my project. I beat Econet to that project. I will later went to engage the Chinese. I, be, I was behind Zimbabwe in being registered in Brazil together with Ambassador Fuma, whom I told you about. These loans which uh, some people are breaking about now and making commissions out of it, I'm the one who initiated them, you know, and then, of course, I'm the one who put Zimbabwe on the Export-Import Bank eligibility list of India, Export-Import Bank of India. When you see these Ashko Clayland buses, it's because I put Zimbabwe on the, when I was Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. I know this game. So if, and I, that's why I'm so proud about the capabilities of the war veterans, because I'm one of them. There's so much which can do rather than this, uh, you know, Philistine approach to, 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 to economic management, which has been the manifest in some of the G40 speeches.
Mm. Some will say that uh, approaching the Indaba, one of the uh, prerequisites or one of the uh, main points that you wanted to achieve there was the dismantling of the uh, so-called G4 to faction. Uh, but there was no pronouncement to say it has been dismantled. What are your views on that? put the matter on, on the agenda we are firmly pursuing it on the agenda we are i told you we we, we, we have dealt with the enemies which are much tougher than than, than some of these things the rhodesians were no slouches right. what i can assure you is that every antenna of the war veteran is up on the issue of the people who want to zap and change the course of the history of zimbabwe and with it it is with the ordinary rank and people people whom they live with we do not. We are not bothered with people who live on the internet. We are bothered with the people who make the majority of this Zimbabwe population. And I can tell you, there is hard. There is no diff. We made the Zimbabwe people become conscious of who they are. Before the war veterans organized rural people, they were like locusts being, you know, taken in any direction by the colonial wind. We gave them the identity. We gave them solidity. The solidity which Zimbabweans have become the most conscious people in Africa today. So we know how we did it. Nobody else knows it as good as we do. So that's why I speak with pride about our achievements. We speak on the record of our achievement. We don't speak on the record of some silly articles on the internet or some tweeting. We don't talk. We don't talk that stuff. We talk serious stuff. Are you not fighting in the Lacoste corner? No. There is nothing which is called, I've never been to a Lacoste meeting, I don't even know if there's some, I think that name comes from somebody, so from the G40, they are the ones who, who huddle every morning and they look for silly women who, who disparage vice presidents before big meetings. We, 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 I, there's nothing like a Lacoste, when, when 10,000 war veterans gather and you know you try to brand them as belonging to it, it's because you don't know nothing about the history of this country and what those people achieved. And we sooner we, we sooner rather than later you will be winnowed out. And I don't mince my words on that particular issue because I I, I know the sentiments which we, we, we which the war veterans have about those issues. I'm right. I'm hitting the right code with my constituents. Okay. What, what are your current relationship? What is your current relationship with the president? Very good. You know, the president the other day was at Euros Acre. I was felt very humbled and honoured when he mentioned that Chris. Mchangwa was one of the people he met you know, in, 19, in, in 1975 when we went to war. I had organized the demonstration at his house in Highfield when I was at university when, on, on the Jitepo's death. I was one of the prime movers of that, of, of that uh, demonstration. We, 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 it would have been turned into a massacre, but for the dexterity of the president in dealing with the Rhodesians, he, he, you know, he was given a second to say something to disarm and the, 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 the demonstrating students when all the Soweto would have happened at his, at his house in Highfield. He dealt with the matter and he, he appealed to us. The other girl I met yesterday somewhere, he says, do you remember what the president said in 1975 at his house? Says, please hold on to your girls and take them to invade. Don't leave them. The Rhodesians will maraud them. And we did exactly that. And the whole incident ended without any, you know, somebody dying. And he could also have been killed on that particular occasion. A couple of weeks later, of course, he went to Mozambique. And a couple of weeks later, I also followed him into Mozambique. I go a long way back with the president. Nothing will shake, shake that relationship. You know, there have been attempts to abuse State House, maybe, you know, you know do against me. I understand exactly, you know, I've, I've, I've been through this before. Like I told it in Yadzonia, I was in prison for fighting in the corner of the, of the, girls, who, the girls who were being abused. I have not, I, it's, it's in my character. When I, if I see something going wayward, whether it be the Rhodesians or it be the G4 or whether it be some, you know, generals who are overreaching themselves in the camps, I stand on the ground of what is good. So I, I, I'm, I'm very happy with my relationship with the president. But at some, at some point it looked as if it had hit a low point. Uh, when, when <laughs> there, are ups and, there are ups and downs, but look, we are revolutionaries at the end of the day. My bond with the president is that of a revolutionary, of a comrade. And that, really, that bond supersedes anything else. It always holds out when everything else has, you know, has been cast aside. So we are both revolutionaries. I've got great respect to him. There is absolutely no African leader 
who has pushed the agenda of African reform and, 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 and revolutionary achievement the way he has done over the years. And you got to, to, to salute that kind of dedication to a cause. It's unprecedented in modern African history. And what it has done, it has created a very solid, conscious political uh, you know, populace in Zimbabwe, which is going to achieve things which Africa has never done. We are on the verge, on the cusp of something very big. <clears throat> Can you get some water? All Thank right. You. Uh, whilst you are re uh, taking your water, uh, Comrade, you are a well educated war well vet and you know your history. That's a, one, one listener was just sent in a WhatsApp message, uh, and another one here. Good evening, my brother. Please can you ask uh, Comrade Muchango how many are there by the time of the liberation struggle? Because we all, hey, but yeah, well, the, the language there is a bit broken there. It's not very clear. But uh, the narrative, uh, Comrade Dumiso Dabengwa recently said that uh, the problem with that the war vets find themselves there in is that they should stop whinging and whining uh, because they've been used as ZANU PF shock troopers and that they should not have pledged their loyalty to one man but to Zimbabwe. Your sentiments on that? War veterans have said that we are the stockholders of ZANU PF, so we can't be used by that which belongs to us.